This is a Stand Up New York Labs production, providing you podcasts since 2013. Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe Liss. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, oh, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is fitting at me. Holy hell! We're on a highway to jizz! Good to be here, folks. Thanks for tuning in. I'm gay, you're fat, and we love ya. Tuesdays with stories here. Coming at ya in uh, snowy New York. Could be. Yeah, could be snowing. It was snowing in Albany. Oh. Yeah, Albany. Boy, cold town. It's one of those towns, all you get to do is the mall. Yeah, that's the same. I mean, I was out at, uh, you know, at Zany's in Rosemont. Yes. And it was 20 degrees. I got lost walking there. I'm like, can you walk there? And then, of course, everywhere you go, people are like, I don't know, it's walking distance. Yes. They don't know. And it's, by the way, it's like 500 yards away. Mm. But the lady said, yeah, you go out and take a left out of the hotel. So I took a left, and then my GPS went haywire. Yep. And it was 10 degrees and snowing, and uh, or not snowing, but windy. And I got a lot. I was freaking out. My hands go numb. I have. I think I have this Raynads disease. You ever hear about that? Gonad. It's a Raynad. Raynad. Yeah, it's a thing where your circulation is gay. It doesn't flow. Ah, uh, I don't know. You got to flow. So I don't have. I got no flow. So I turn all white and pale and uh, you know, cancery. Yeah, yeah. And so I was numb, and I had to call the manager. of Great woman over there, Cindy. She runs the whole club. She's great over there. Oh, Cindy's good. Cindy's really good. Blonde lady. Yes. yes. And uh, just a great club. Zany's Rosemont. In your mind, you're like, oh, it's Rosemont. I'm far away. I'm in the downtown B club by the airport. The burbs. But it's like they built it for comedy. It's a perfect design. Killer club. Might be one of my favorite clubs, this perfect club. Perfect room, yeah. But, but you get the old farts, don't you? That wasn't that many old farts. There was uh, some old farts. I had a lot of young farts. I feel like I had a lot of old queefs. I had old farts, young queefs, but uh, it was pretty pretty great. All right. And uh, I had a great, great time. This guy, Vince MC, who's hilarious. He's been around forever. Fritz Knobblenocker featured. I forget Whoa, how to say his name. A hell of a n- misnomer. Yeah, and uh, Jim Flanagan did a guest spot. Sal Volcano came by. What? How crazy is this? So I'm in Rosemont. I go out. I take a lift to Starbucks. I'm going to write at Starbucks. Let me sit and write. Mm-hmm. And I'm writing. I'm doing a little, you know, writing, listening to a set, trying to get the work done, trying to get in there and grind it out. You Good know? for you. You got to grind. You got to work out there. You young kids out there, you got to write. You got to listen to your sets. You got to just sit in that coffee shop and stare at your reflection and, and, and just. It ain't pretty. It's not fun. No, but it's part of the job. It's not fun, but it, it beats, uh, you know, taking out the trash or kicking mice or whatever. Got that right. So I'm sitting there, literally, I'm, I'm looking out at the highway, and then there's like this huge parking lot and like this old blue weird arena looking thing. And I'm like, mm. I wonder what goes on there. Then I scan my view, and I see a big uh, you pan. marquee. I pan. Yes. Not scan, I pan. Yep. Pan I see pan. a marquee. And it says, oh, the Chicago Wolves are playing. And I said, oh, maybe I'll check out a hockey game. That's the AHL. AHL? American Hockey League. Ah. That's like AAA, you know. Got it. The minor league system. The Chicago Wolves are the Vegas Knights. Mm. Underbelly, or whatever you call it. Mm-hmm. Little league team. Gotcha. And then... Pee Wee. It flips from the Chicago Wolves to the Impractical Joker. Hey! Where'd I go? That ain't, that's the majors. That is the major. I mean, they are majors. And I see uh, our buddy Sal on there. And I go, oh, well, Impractical Jokers are playing this arena. How crazy that I'm sitting here writing my jokes. And there's my buddy on the big screen at the arena. I look at the date. Same date. It's that night. That night. That night. The exact night you were talking about. I take the fairy pants. I was returning. So I take a photo. I send it to Sal. He's like, what are you doing there? I said, I'm doing Zanies. He said, oh, my God, we kiss on the lips. He said, I'm going to come by. Uh-huh. I say, great. So I do the show Friday night or Saturday night. Maybe it was Friday. I can't remember. It was Friday night. I do the show. He does his show at the arena. 
He shoots on over. He's staying across the street from Zanies. Literally, wow. his hotel is across the street. Wow. So he walks over. He does a guest spot. They go bananas. Oh, how like, great ah! is that? You, you it's know so celebrities. Fun. It's exciting. And what's weird about Impractical Jokers is I feel like they're huge, but they haven't crossed over into the zeitgeist. The mainstream, you mean? Yeah, well, like people watch the show or they don't, but like... Like Louis, for instance, got so big, like he's at the Oscars, he's at the Emmys, ah, he's on the cover of People magazine. Right. So even if you don't know his shit, you now know who he is. Household. Like I don't listen to Justin Bieber, but I'm familiar with Justin Bieber. Oh yeah. And Practical Jokers, like three quarters of the crowd is like, bah! and then the yeah. other quarter is like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, who's this chubby? Who's this guy? Wop. Yeah. So uh, he goes on, does a set, and kills. I mean, they love him. And then we hang out back. He watches the set. We bullshit. It's fun to just bump into a friend on the road. Oh, it's the bit. You're so lonely. So lonely. It's a and uh, it's really, it's difficult. And I don't want to complain about comedy because people have, you know, roofing and they're mm -hmm. cops and they're firemen or whatever. But uh, when you're out there, it's hard to fill those days. Oh, yeah. It's uh, like you get up. I wake up at 10 o'clock in the morning and I'm like, I'm going to really get after today. Sink my teeth into the, uh, the asshole. Yes. So I'm, like, I'm going to go work out. So I go work out. But working out, I mean, really, Max, you're working out 45 minutes? An hour. Maybe. Yeah. An hour is a long workout. I do an hour. That's a long time to be working out. I got problems. If you take a class or do yoga, that's sure, one thing. Sure. But just like by yourself in a gym, yeah, I can't do it. Mm -hmm. I can put in about 30 minutes. Maybe I'll do 15 cardio, whatever. It's just like, what am I doing? I'm sitting in the room for an hour. But wait, wait you don't have, I have a routine. I have a regiment. I have a routine, but it's not an hour long. Oh, I mean, okay. you can get gassed in five minutes. Oh, sure. So it's, uh, if I, like I said, if I go to yoga, it's a 90 minute class. You take a spin, whatever the fuck. Mm -hmm. But just in a hotel gym, I'm also talking about a hotel gym with his four machines. It's oh, like, how many fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. Nautilus curls can I do? No, I go to the Planet Fit or the 24-hour. Yeah, I mean, if I'm at my own gym, it's a different situation. But yeah. Anyway, so I put 45 minutes in. Then I go to Starbucks. I'm like, let me write. But once again, it's like, how much time can you really put in just sitting on a stool at Starbucks? Yeah. Two hours max. Man, you want to kill yourself. You stare at your phone. You stare at your asshole. It's too much. And there's science behind it. Your brain is not that productive uh -huh. for it, two straight hours it, it trying to write out. jokes. Yeah. Exactly. If so you now. Some other people in the room, you could probably do some brain anal, but yeah. So now it's just. Now two hours and 45 minutes have passed. It's 1 30 in the afternoon. I got six and a half hours till the show. <laughs> And I'm like, all right, boy, now what do I do now? Yeah. And it's one thing if you're in Chicago or New York or Austin, you can go see some sites as a museum. But in Rosemont, you're just kind of like, I guess I'll just watch TV. Yeah. You make a few phone calls, but even then you're like, I'm just walking on the, on the phone. Right. I check in with people. Dr. Yeah. Louie, he's doing fine. You He'll text. be back, you sons of bitches. Louie's coming back, folks. At some point. Yeah. Who knows what. But anyways, fun weekend, great club, great time. And uh, I forget what I wanted to say. Oh, God, I had a big thing I was going to talk about. Volcano. Yeah. Walking. Oh, shit. Oh, boy, you'd, you'd be proud of this. Let me tell you this story, because I was going to text you. Oh, oh, go ahead. Was that it? Did we get it? I think that might have been it, but I got uh, another big thing all here. All right. Hit me. I want to get into this. Before I left for Chicago, you're going to really shit a brick here. The weekend oh, before. Boy. I'm excited. I'm in the city. I was going to call you or text you, but then I was like, I'll just save it for the pod. Woo! This is an exclusive, folks. I haven't heard this yet. Hot exclusive. Now, you're a guy. You like to run around. You like to do a lot of spots. You're jumping on the train. You do the thing where you lie. You said you get hit by a cab yep. because you're a little late. You do the whole thing. Oh, yeah. How about this, Double Now, this one, few would dare to do. Ooh, baby. I'm doing a show downtown. Patrick, I don't know how you say his name. Holbert? Holbert? I don't know. Him. Do you I don't know him? him? Great guy. He's got a couple good shows. Really Patty good guy. Holder, eh? Sweet as pie. Funny guy. Maybe I do. I just know him I as feel Patty. Like he's done his show. His name's Patrick. I don't know if it's Holbert or Holbert. Holbert. Holcomb. I can't remember. I mean, I know how to spell it. Oh, all right. What's H O L probably? Bert. It's probably Bert. Holbert. 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 But it might be Holbert. No. Like Bobby A. Bear. I think it's Holbert. Well, we'll figure it out. Call in, Pat. Hey, Patty. Call in. I'm doing his show, killer show, by the way. Have you done this show? It's Where? on uh, Second and, and B. What the hell's the oh, name of the show? Oh, I thought you were in Chicago. I'm sorry. No, no, this is in New York. Oh, I think I have done that show. It's killer. It's in a basement taco show. Yes, yeah, that they show's amazing. They give you amazing. tacos. That's a great show. So I, I'm doing that. I'm committed to that. But then after I've committed, 
I get my stand-up New York spots. Uh-huh. They give me an 8.15 uh-huh. and a 10.15. Now, Ooh. this show, i got to go on at 9 p.m. On the dot. I'm getting off stage at stand-up New York on 78th and Broadway. Great club. Come visit us. 78th and Broadway. I get off stage at 8.30. Yeah. i got to be on stage at 2nd and B yeah. at 9 p.m. And you're not going to cab it, are you? Unbelievable. Well, cab's no good. Cab's that slows no good. you. Yes, because you got to east to west, west to east. So all day I'm tossing and turning. I thought about calling. I'm like, I can't do it. Oh, i got to cancel. Got it. What am I going to do? That's a half minutes. hour. Upper West to Alphabet City. That's a big leap, folks. We're not talking East Village. We're not talking Greenwich. Nothing. No. There's no even connection. So I'm like, I'm, I'm tossing and turning. I'm like, I got to cancel. I should cancel. I should figure something out. I, I'm, I'm just going to do it. Yeah. I'm just going to trust that I can do it. Good for you. And the worst case scenario, I ruined this really nice, thoughtful guy's entire show. Yeah, he'll figure it out. So I go up to uh, Stand Up New York. And uh, James Mattern's hosting, who's the best host in the city, I he's, think. That guy's got an energy in him. He's got a great energy. He's got great jokes. He got, he's great at crowd work. And he's so sweet. He's like, if you don't like a guy, keep cool. Yes. Or be over so he does that. And he's got bits. And he's just really funny. He does the perfect mix of crowd work and jokes. Yeah. And just the nicest guy on earth. Great. And he's just a natural. He was born to ho. He's a natural MC. Yeah. He's a really... Good guy. <clears throat> so he's hosting. I'm going first, and I say uh, they're really nice here. I'm like, I gotta really get to Alphabet City. It's gonna be brutal. So if you could just shave a couple yes. seconds off, shave. and everyone's really thoughtful because this is hard, folks. Oh yeah, because you you you, you gotta you committed to these two things, and we're just trying to hustle to make a living. You yes. Know? So I go, all right, so light me at 12. And I tell James, I'm like, hey, when he lights me, I'm gonna just skate right out of here, if you mm. don't mind. Because what? who's gonna know? It's two minutes, really. Yeah. So he goes up. He gets me up right at 8.15. Hot crowd. The weekends are killer here. Yeah, good weekend. I do a great set or whatever. I say, he likes me. I say good night. I say thank you, James. I run out. I grab my coat, my backpack, and I sprint right out the door. I head to the 2-3 at 72nd Street. Oh, you Street. skip the one. Got to skip the one. You got to get the 2-3. And my whole night is relying on, like, if I, I got to get... When you have two trains and you got to go far, you're like, you got to get that first train immediately you gotta get or you're it. fucked. Yes. Because otherwise you run down there, you just stand there. So I run down and the train is leaving. Ah! And I go, oh, it's leaving. I'm fucked. It's all over. This is it. All this planning, ah. tossing and turning. Poor Holbert. Yes, Holbert. I get downstairs. How about this? It's not leaving. It's arriving. Wait, wait, wait. I said leaving on the screen. I thought it was leaving because ah. the thing was blinking and oh. I saw movement. So when I saw the movement, I thought it was leaving, but it was just arriving. It's arriving, folks. So now I say, this is the most perfect situation. This is what I needed. Yes. I do a belly flop into the train. As the doors close, they click my ankle. Yes. I'm in there. It was like the fugitive. When he's Woo. shooting, he pulls his foot through. Yes. I'm on the roof. Uh, so I get on the train. The 2-3 is cooking now. It goes straight to 40 seconds. So now you're like, all right, I just knocked out 30 blocks. Boom. Two minutes. Boom. Then it goes to Penn Station. Then it stops at Penn Station for uh, a little bit. Uh, thing, I hate the holding. You know that thing when the doors aren't closed? You're like, come on, close. Yes. Close. If it just closes, life. I'll do anything. I'll blow my mother. I just need it to close. Yes. Finally it closes. Now it skips all the way down to 14th. Now I'm already at 14th Street. Look at that. Pretty good. You're already in the village. Now I'm there in about 15 minutes. So then I got to run. Now that transfer there is brutal. Now some of you aren't New Yorkers, so just play along the here. Corridor. You got to get to the 6th Avenue from 7th Avenue underground. So yeah. I run there. It's a long haul. I'm hallway. running. My coat's flipping. I'm pushing people out of the way. I elbow the guy that sells the incense there. I hate that guy. Flip his whole table. I'm like, get out of here, you son yeah, of a bitch. He's nobody got, cares. He's got comic books and incense. Yeah, my two least favorite things. You don't sell comic book and incense. I'm sorry. Pick one, you hobo. One or the other, you piece of shit. I hate you. Go above ground. Get some sun. Yes. So anyways, Kick I get down mouse. there. I'm looking for the F now. Now I need the F. To get to 2nd Avenue, which you get off at 1st Avenue, now I can run over. Yeah, that's still a run, by the way. And it's still a while, so now I'm waiting for the F for a while. So now I'm texting Patrick. I go, I'm fucked here. I'm sorry, I'm waiting for the F. I'll be there as soon as I can. Yes. He, writes, he gives me the text that everyone wants to hear. He said, don't worry, we're seven minutes behind. Oh! But still, out of pride, you're like, fuck the seven minutes. I'm getting there on time, you baby. You goddamn right you are. So finally, the F arrives. I get off at 2nd Avenue. I align myself at the front of the train to get off at 1st Avenue. Yes. I get off. I run upstairs. I'm sprinting. Once again, I'm elbowing. I'm going yes. through. I'm Hit. running up Houston Street. Hit the pregnant lady. Move the kid. Yes, you got a shopping carriage full of bottles and cans. Get out of here, you piece of shit. I throw him a 20. Cans. Just cans. I get there. Patrick's outside waiting. I look at my clock. It's 9 p.m. Oh! I got from stand-up New York on stage 
to the poke, whatever, the, not Poco Lounge, what's the name of that place? I don't, I don't know. know, it's like Lucy's or something like that. Taco Rio. Yeah. I didn't kill my wife. I don't care. But I got that. You were pointing my gun at me. So I got there in exactly a half hour. Wow. There's <clears throat> like five minutes left. Great crowd. It's packed down Great there. show. Killer. Packs it out. Carolyn, I thought her name was Castiglia. I've been saying Castiglia for years, but I think it's Castiglia. Oh, uh, well. I've, I've been, been saying her name wrong for fucking 20 years. I feel terrible. I don't even know how to say it now. Castiglia is what I've been saying. That's not right. Castiglia, something like that. She, she, maybe that's like a prince thing where she changed it. I don't know, but I felt really bad about it. Oh, sorry, Susan. Uh, but anyway, so she's hosting, and she's great. She get, brings me up. I go right up. I do whatever, 30 minutes, hot 30 crowd. 30 minutes? Yeah, it's like a headlining thing. Oh, wow. And it pays accordingly. Yes. And then so I finish that, and uh, they're great. I say, thank you. I got to run out. I grab my coat. But now I got to get back to stand-up New York. Uh, you're back on the clock. But fortunately, I did a big move. I switched. I got to thank Chloe Hilliard. She switched from my 10.15 to 10.30. That's a big help. So I bought that extra 15 minutes because it's impossible to do what I did if you're not a New Yorker. Oh, yeah. Impossible. So there's no way it's happening twice. No, no. So I switched. I got 15 extra minutes. But now I got to run back there. I did the whole run over again and made it back. Just in time. And had I not switched, I would have only been four minutes late. I made it back in wow, 34 minutes. Oh, look at that. So I got the triple up and uh, each paid, you know, weekend spots. It's a nice, you know, two and a quarter or whatever. Yeah. And now, because I ran around, I'm done at 1030, there 1045. It is. My you, night's over. You pack it all in. I got home and I'm home at 1130 on a Saturday, Friday night. With a nice wad. Great show. Nice wad. And what a relief it is. Woo. Pop, plop, fizz, fizz. Now, come on. This is my whole life. I do this. I got five spots tonight. Don't you kind of... Wasn't it a fun rush? Did you enjoy it? Well, when you pull it off. But yes. when you don't, I can't. that's what I can't bear. I can't handle it. Yeah. If I'm like, I just, I'm late. And they're like, we put all this together. We advertised. Right. You fucking, we were saying you are going to be here. You didn't yeah. come. You're a fucking, what the fuck? So when yeah. it doesn't go well, and then it could happen, it could have happened th Three times over. Then I can't get back to stand-up New York. Right. and then Because I've, I've been there where you're up there, you're going, what the fuck? This guy's late, and now my blah, 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 blah. Yeah. But when yeah. you can pull it off, it feels good. Oh, no better feeling. And what a city. It's the only city you can do that in. You can't do that shit in L.A. Just sitting in traffic. Right. Also, it's hard to get the quality out of the set because I'm not thinking about my set. I'm right. just running, and now I'm like, uh, here's this joke. I don't know how this joke goes. I'm yeah. gay, and that's it. Yeah, I don't know. I, I really get a kick out of it. And I, I love that. There's so much opportunity to get laughs from different people in one city. I love that you can go down to this room. It's a whole, it's like a grungy, like, dive bar room, and you kill with them. And you go back up to Stamp New York, it's a bunch of tourists. You kill with them. I love that. I love the mix. It was quite a mix and uh, really fun. But, yeah, totally different crowd. This was like Latino alphabet city, yes. you know, some grit. And that was like tourist, Swedish, whatever. Exact mundo. But uh, great hang, and uh, thanks to everybody involved. What a night. What a night. What a fun time. And done early, too, with that nice uh, weekend pay. is nothing to sneeze at. No, I like it. You love the comedy cellar, but then, like, my spots are always late there. It's like yes. there's something cool about being on stage at 2.30 in the morning, but uh, there's also yeah. something cool about having my feet up watching the late ball game. You right. Know? And I like that alphabet C. It's good to get back in those bar rooms. Those are lunch. Yeah, it's fun to, fun fun times. I'm trying to do more of those. If you have a bar show, reach out. I'd love to do it. Yeah, we all would. But it's, it's hard to say no to the club spots because of course, uh, they pay. They pay. And we're all, you know, I get a lot of like, "Hey, what are you doing Friday night?" I'm like, ah, "I'm in, you know, I'm in uh, Pittsburgh." Right, right. Yeah, there's a lot of that, and then people start to feel bad. Like, I don't want to keep bothering you. I'm like, "No, no, it's not a bother." Bother. It's not a bother for me to be like, "I can't. I'm unavailable." Yeah. You know. Yeah, I love the comedy hang. I got to say, in Albany, we had a uh, Chris Allen, and we had this host guy Corey, and Chris Allen, very uh, funny guy, but he's also very insecure, and he wore a tiny shirt ah. that he couldn't even barely button. It was like a button down, so he left it open like this, and he had the t-shirt under it with the button down over it open, and it was tight. And the whole night he kept doing this, and we kept noticing he was tugging on it, and now it's in his head. We're like, you going on stage with that tiny shirt? Like I was texting people going. Hey, can you text Chris Allen to make fun of his shirt? So oh, I got extra fun. people shitting on it. We got the host shitting on it. I'm shitting on it. He could barely go on. Then he brought his coat on stage. Oh, on stage coat. Yeah, because he didn't want to wear the shirt. He wanted people to see the shirt. And that was the first show on Saturday. So then he was doing. He took the coat off eventually on stage. He started talking about the shirt. That's how it, in his head he was. Oh wow! The shirt. It was so we were dying in the back. It was great. Then between the first and the second show, we were in a mall. So he went and bought a shirt. By the way, probably a large shirt. 
He's well, a big guy. He's a big guy, yeah. I mean, he'd probably be a blanket on me. Yeah, it was a big shirt. Or he's huge. He's a lot. I think he's 6'4", 280. Yeah, real big, yeah, big he's, uh, guy. Refrigerator Perry, yeah, this guy. Yeah, real heavy. Yeah, he's fat. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he, he had a, boy, he's killer. He's a good, some good sets, and uh, it was just a great weekend. That, that uh, when you got a guy in your corner, everything's better. It's fun. Well, yeah, well, you have some, like, I mean... When I was in uh, Rosemont, I really like the guys I'm working with, but they're they're dads. They yeah. got stuff going on during the day, you know. Right. That uh, it's so lonely. All yeah. I do is just beat off. My dick is facing the wrong direction. Oh, it's a crook. It's got a hook in it. It's 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 not even. I don't. I want to show it to you. It's a candy cane. It's got thumbprints and it's got a right angle in it now. And yeah. one vein is bigger than the dick itself. It's oh, really a problem. You the big vein, huh? Yeah, <laughs> and I'm I'm coming just a drip. It doesn't shoot; it just falls out. Yeah, it's just kind of like Ugh. sad. Yeah, yeah, like a like a car door open and there's a body in there. Right, it's like the last drop in a in a syrup bottle. The last of the Mohicans. Mohicans. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of Mohicans, by the way, my friend in high school had a huge dong and he had two veins going down the middle like racing stripes. It was pretty wild. Wow, matching veins. Matching veins, parallel lines. Wow, that's something. It's like a math problem. Ah, uh-huh. yeah, it was a problem. <laughs> so uh so I had a, a fun one at the uh, the cellar the other night actually not fun. You know, good hang of the cellar is like Wolf, uh Soder, Marill, just a great hang. We're all chopping it up, having a good time. Mateo and uh Hassan Minaj and all these fun people. Jeff Ross was there and uh they go, "Hey, uh you're on, Mark." And I go, "Great." And then as I'm going on, like I'm going down the stairs, I notice like a big commotion, like a lot of people coming in. Yeah. And it's Apatow yeah, boy. with Barry Levinson. Barry Levinson? The director. He directed Rain Man. Did he? Yeah. Wow. Love that. Rain Man. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, so he comes in. <laughs> That's not a line. Was that it? What yeah. am I thinking of? Uh, I don't what's know. What's a line from Rain Man? Rain Man, uh, squeezed and pulled and hurt my neck. Uh, yeah. Kmart sucks. Then, 69 he, Oak Street. Didn't he say a lot of, he would repeat things? Yeah, he'd say, uh, you know, Rain Man, let's play some cards. Uh, cards, yeah, play some cards, cards. Yeah. Yeah, all right. 81, 82, 82, 82, 82. Yeah, there you go. 246 total. I think he did some other movies as well. Oh, certainly. He made uh, Bugsy, I think, was him. Oh, uh, Bugsy. That's Yeah, worked. Barry Levinson. Uh, he Diner? Made... Diner was Barry ah. Levinson, yeah. Uh, a couple others in there. Rain Man was like the biggest that one, the I biggie. think, though. Was that an Oscar? Oh, yeah. All right. Big Oscar. Hmm. Dustin Hoffman won. He was, uh, evidently, he's a creep now. Oh, wow. That's the whole thing. All right, so they go, hey, do you mind if Judd goes on and you know, while, instead of you? And I go, eh, whatever, no problem. I go back upstairs, Kevin Hart shows up. Oh, boy. So now it's a whole to-do. We got Apatow on stage. He's in a blazer. He had just seen Springsteen. Oh, wow. And I wanted to be like, well, my good friend met him. But yeah. uh, I didn't say that. He's probably met him, too, though. He met him that night, yeah. yeah. He said it was an amazing show and blah, blah, blah. You know, Springsteen does a whole thing where he goes, I burned my draft card. And that means some other guy went to Nam in my place, and this song's for him. And he did like an hour on that guy. I was there. I went to the show. We you talked were there? About it. I went to the show. What are you talking about? We did a whole episode. No, no, no. This is last, like, like two days ago. Well, it's the show. That's the show. I thought you saw He does the McCartney. show on Broadway. No, Springsteen on Broadway. That's the show. I talked about it. I cried. It was the biggest night of my life. My oh. agent got it for me, the whole thing. I didn't realize that was a Broadway show. That's Springsteen on Broadway. Oh, I thought you saw a concert. But it's a concert, it's a show. I see. And All it's right. a guy performing comedy show. Ah, my bad, I'm gay. Not comedy, he's not doing comedy. That's weird, though. I mean, that's pretty touching. It's quite touching. I told you, I sobbed. I'll play you back the episode. Please. I don't know if I was there. <laughs> might right. not have been. So, uh, so he comes, he's talking about Springsteen, blah, blah, blah. And uh, I don't know, I get a little annoyed when like celebrity, you know, like an Apatow level is chatting. Because I, I feel like I say something and he's like, yeah, yeah, whatever. And I'm like, God! I'm interesting. Come on. Yeah. Just because I'm not like a celebrity. It's I'm, a, I'm cooler than this guy, whoever a, you're sitting with. It's a tough hang. we got to be careful here. This guy I can know, produce our right. movie, for God's sake. Yeah, right. And I get it. I mean, if, I guess if I'm sitting there, if I, if I was a big celebrity and, you know, Vita was trying to talk to me, I'd shut him up. We could be, you know, knocked up too. Mark and Joe. Yeah, fuck knock, again. Knock me up. 
<laughs> I'd love to Please. knock you up. Jizz in my asshole. It'll, it'll raise a baby. Or the eye. Yeah, LASIK. And a hook shot. Uh-uh. So, uh, but, you know, he's a nice, he's the sweetest, sweet as a cum, oh, cum guy. Sweetest guy on earth and a huge comedy fan. Big comedy nerd. And uh, just put out a special. Check that out. Yeah, Check uh, out his Netflix special. It's really fun. Yeah, yeah, fun. So, uh, so him and Kevin Hart start chatting it up. And um, so they go, all right. <laughs> Now you're on, Mark. And I go, great. So I go down there, and I am just ripping it up. It's like one of those hot nights in uh, New York City. Uh-huh. It's like a 1030 show. You know, you got the 730, the 930, and the 1130. And I feel like the middle one is always the best. Oh, is that right? I think so. Because it's just that gooey middle. It's a right, you know, seven's a little early. It's it's like polka, not polka, Goldilocks. Uh-huh. You know, this, this, this porridge is a little anal. This porridge is a little jizzy. Middle porridge. Good. So I go up, and I'm killing and I get the light from Will Sylvins. So I go, all right, I'll do another two minutes and wrap this puppy up with a bow. And in walks Kevin Hart. Uh-huh. In walks his entourage. In walks Apatow. In walks the, all these people walk in. And they're kind of bumping into people and killing babies and kicking mice and all this shit. And it's kind of throwing me off a little. But I go, ah, fuck it. I'm a pro. And I go into my closer. <laughs> big ending. And I'm like, I'm going to fucking pop this room open with these mofos watching me. I go in the closer, set up, pause for the punch, and this lady heckles oh! in the pause. I was in the pocket. I had it right there on the fucking mound. The ball was coming, and, sh- and somebody put their finger right up my ass. A heckle pause. Heckle pause, a pregnant pause. So, you know, you really just want to sit in that pause, and you go, here it comes. You guys are going to love that. And then she just went, I don't think so, or something like that. I fucked that shrill cunt of a voice. Ruined me. No. So then I had to do, like, four minutes of, like, fuck you, you piece. So now Kevin Hart and Judd Apter are like, this guy's got a problem. <laughs> Jeez, he's an angry asshole. Well, you have a problem, and it's that cunt. I had the cunt problem. I needed a, an exterminator to kill that cunt. Or a tampon. Yes, a pad. Plug her up. Uh-huh. But, yeah, so then I'm going back and forth with her, and she's like, what's the big deal? Why are you blah, blah, blah? And I'm like, what's the big deal? You ruined my closer. The finishing moment. Mm. So uh, I had to just get off, and then they got on, and they are doing their whole thing. And the audience goes crazy. Yeah. Uh, it, was, it was a bitter moment for me. Ah, that's annoying. Yeah, you know, you, you get off, and she was like, Ugh. like, I walked past. She's like, what's your problem? Ugh. And I was like, fuck you. You yeah. ruined my whole life. And then, then you wait in the wings, and you just hear... We got a big surprise, Kevin Hart and Judd, and the place is like, ah! and you're like, God damn it, what's, come on. What's weird about Apatow, it's similar to like the Impractical Jokers thing. A lot of people don't know who he is, because he's a behind-the-scenes guy. True, So true. he doesn't get as crazy a thing when he goes up alone, but when you go up with Kevin Hart, forget yeah, about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. It was a little, little lopsided, because, you know, Kevin Hart uh, is up there. He's like this legend, not legend, but, you know, he's a fucking household name, movie star. Oh, comedian, yeah. Sells out soccer arenas, and then a director. Right, right. You know. Yeah, Hart's as big as it gets. Oh, yeah. He's huge. I mean, physically, as, as no. As small as it gets, also. Yeah. Hosted my live at Gotham. Isn't that crazy? That is so crazy. I never even met him. I was. I remember being so bummed. I was like, I got Kevin Hart. I never even heard of this fucking That's guy. That's hilarious. Three years later, boom. Boom. Huge. Now he's in Jumanji 6 or whatever we're on now. Yeah, well, I don't like the Jumanji remakes. Oh. I hate the remake. The movie's 18 years old or something. But he's really got his his foot in all the kettles, or whatever you say. He's doing kid movie, action movies. Yeah. He's doing late night talk shows. He's doing stand up. He's dirty. He's an action star. He's got it all going. Oh, man, he's cr- I mean, the work ethic on that guy. He gets up at five. He has like a workout routine every day. He never misses it. Then he does something else. Then he does press. Then he looks at his guy. I mean, it's crazy. Then he does stand up at night. It's insane. Yeah, he's really something. Uh, yeah. So let's see if. Uh... Oh, all right. Oh, I forgot to mention this. Uh, so, uh, I uh, have an Amtrak plan to go to Albany. I know I'm talking about Albany a lot, but it was a it was a f- big, thick, meaty weekend. An eventful week. Thank you. So, uh, I got an Amtrak, and the Albany guy calls me, the, the, the manager of the club, and he goes, how would you feel about this? And I hope my agent doesn't hear this, because I might get in trouble. But he goes, you want to come up a little early on Thursday? Because I had a Thursday train arrival at like 6 p.m. I like to cut it close, you know yeah. what I mean? And he's like, why don't you come up a little early and uh, do a corporate gig at, like, 3? You know, you know these, these companies rent out the club, and they do, like, a little holiday bullshit where they right. all raffle, and they all talk about how, oh, Ian clogged the toilet again in the office, and Gene stole my stapler, and we're all assholes or whatever. Right, right. So uh, 
So I was like, yeah, sure. He's like, I'll throw you an extra couple of hundred bucks. And he's like, we got one Friday, too. And I was like, great. So I drive up with this kid from Beantown, Paul Spratt. Oh, I know Paul Spratt. You know Paul Spratt? Yeah, yeah. Sweet guy. Good egg. And uh, we drive up together and, uh, you know, nice ride. He let me fall asleep, which was very nice. I think he's from the same town as me. No. His cousin's from the same town. We talk, He's from Brockton. Yeah, I grew up in Whitman. It's like, what, like 100 yards away. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think his cousin went to high school with me or something like that. I mentioned Whitman. He was uh, quite unfazed. He was like, I don't know, Whitman. Well, that's crazy because they're touching. <laughs> well, I've been touched. All right. So we go up together. We can do the corporate gig. And uh, it is, like, packed. All, like, this giant business. I was like, what's the name of the business? They're like, Business Affairs Enterprise. And it's all very vague, and I fucking bombed, and it was brutal. But, uh, you know, I got that extra money. We hit the buffet. There's, a, you know, they bring food out, and I hit the food. And then I had radio at 6 a.m. God damn, we got to talk about radio. Ugh, I hate radio. So many radios. I had four radios to do. One got canceled, which is like a godsend. Uh-huh. And that was brutal. So uh, I, I do one radio, and it's like the rock and roll hard rock station with like, you know, the guy's got like a tongue piercing, and he's bald, and he's got weird like soul patch, and there's all these funny things on the wall, you know, like, suck my dick, George Bush, and like, yeah, yeah. Jesus is fag, or whatever the and hell. They collect, and they have like a Star Wars figure yes! that they put lipstick on. Yes! And it's, yeah, it's always like a, a bobblehead with cum on it. Yeah, a lot of knickknacks, and they've been in that room for 40 years, so just acquiring all this bullshit. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, there's like a dartboard with Saddam Hussein's face, all this <laughs> shit, you know? So I go in there, and they're like, what's it like? What are you, what are you doing out there? Are you getting drunk? You fucking, uh, you fucking men and all on the road, living on the road. I'm like, ah, it's not that crazy. I'm, I'm doing this at 6 a.m. I hate myself. I'm gay. I'm gonna, I'm looking forward to the free breakfast at the hotel. And, uh, so I get out of that room and, you know, I'm shucking and jiving, trying to be funny. And I get out of there and we go right across the hall to the next room and, uh, the next, next studio. And it's just some other radio station. And the lady's in like, she's got like a scarf on and she's wearing like a knit sweater. And she's got like a snow globe and a cat oh, picture wow. that says hang in there. And she's like, hello, Mark. How are you? And I was like, hey, I'm good. I was still at rock and roll, but I'm like, what's going on, you big twat? Yeah, comedy, right? And she's like, yeah, yeah. So uh, I hear you open for Louis C.K. And I was like, oh, yeah, I love Louis. And she was like, what do you think about all the touching? And I was like, oh, or the, the jerking off. And I was like, oh, come on, get out of town. Who gives a shit? The jerking off. Grow up. What are you, crazy? And I, I look at her, and she's like, ah, she's freaking out. We, we get out of there. We did like 20 minutes. I'm bombing. She hates me. We get out of there. She's, she's in a coma. She's freaking out. They're giving her CPR. And we leave there, and they were like, that was the easy listening religious station. And I was like, oh, my God, I had no idea. Well, what'd you have me on for? I know. What are you going to get some religious nuts coming out to my comedy show? These clubs, we got to get the word out. It's over with the radio. Enough with the fucking terrestrial. <laughs> it's over for Bozo. Bozo's Sweden. Done. What was the country? Sweden turned off their FM. Did you hear that? I saw no. it on Twitter. No, no. It was Sweden or Finland or Norway or Germany or Israel. One of those countries, they turned off the FM. They cut the cord. FM's over. Well, why would they keep AM? You think you'd keep a FM over AM? Well, AM, I think, is like, there's a bomb coming. It's a nuclear war or something ah. like that. You have to have like a boop 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 Schindler's List is playing. <laughs> <Right>. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You gotta let them know. Aha. Uh -huh. But FM, they're done. It's over. Got it. But that, it's the same thing. I, I told you, I had a 6.30 AM pickup to go from Rosemont to downtown Chicago. Rush hour traffic. 75-minute ride. I did a five-minute recording with Brian and Lou and their fans and their great guys. And I love the show. And I'm like them. And I want to be on the show. And we're recording. I'm like, I could have done a phone call. Let me call in. Two and a half hour car ride. It's silly. At 6.30 AM. Yes. The sun's not even out. I'm in the back of the car talking to Johnny, the driver. Uh. And everyone's nice. I love everyone involved. I love the club. I love Zanies. I love Brian. I love Lou. I love Johnny. I love my mother. I love my Uncle Dale. Cindy. But and Cindy's the best. But it, it's like... How many people really came from this five-minute uh, spot? Dude, I even ask when I'm on stage. I go, who heard me on the radio? Not a peep. Not a pop, not a peep, not a tee. He never said ha. Huh. Not and a ha. Huh. These clubs should just get local podcasts now. Like, let me be on a podcast. Or yes. Like, there's more people coming from me doing talking about it on the podcast. There are oh, a bunch yeah. of podcast fans, but... Uh, it's just hard to imagine anyone listening to the radio at 8 a.m. being like, that was a funny uh, off-the-cuff line he just had. Right. You know, instead of, I'm going to go home from a hard day's work. I've been up since 7 a.m. 
I'm going to go to a comedy show tonight and uh, spend some money. Fuck that. It's not going to one tweet does more. It's hard and I appreciate it, but I just feel like it's a little old agey. And they pay for that shit too. They pay they have to rent out the radio time. That's why they make you do it. Well, and the driver must have got paid $1000. He was in the car for a fucking we could have watched Braveheart and uh, you know, Babe picking the city. Ah, uh, yes. I think I had like a big director that babe. George, uh, what's his toe? Or the guy that did Max, Max, Maximilian. Redenbacher? Max Fury. Mad Max Fury Road. Oh, he did that. Yeah, he did Babe. Boy, he's got some range. Yeah, he does. Although Babe was a <laughs> best picture, I believe. A nominee. I think it won. No. I'm pretty sure that I'll, pig I'll, took I'll, home the gold. I'll pay five million dollars. Babe, Shovel. pig in the city didn't win the Oscar. Get on it. I think Babe won. It didn't win. I know the Oscar. I've seen every Oscar since I was six. All babe right. didn't win. They didn't have a pig out there. The only pig out there is Meryl Streep. Where's my Christmas gift? My uh, wedding gift. Yeah, Streep. You're, you're a renegger. <laughs> Whoa, we're gonna have to. She edit. reneged. That's an E, folks. Neg. She's not a pig. She's sweet as pie, and I love her, and I hope she never hears this. She's a cow and a liar. I had to think of some Hollywood woman to say pig, but you can't even say that anymore. I was waiting for Oprah. Oh, Oprah, no. She's glorious. Chicago, baby. Oh, big O. Oprah and Anthony. No, it didn't win, but it's nominated. All right, all right. There's no way it won. Selby doesn't even have a computer over there. (laughs) What are you, a typewriter? It was nominated for Best Song. That's it? Best Song. That's it. No, no, no. Not Pig in the City. The original Babe. Oh, the original Babe. Yeah, Pig in the City was direct to vid. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they, they oh, put shit. that thing on the slaughterhouse. Yeah, it was uh, nominated for best picture. Didn't win though. It won best effects, but it was nominated for like picture, director, Damn. screenplay. Yeah, that's something. I mean, right. they really love that Babe. That movie stunk. Not to be confused with the Babe with John Goodman oh, as Babe Ruth and Kelly McGinnis. Oh, I loved it when I was a kid. Oh, when I was a kid, I loved uh, Gallagher. <laughs> Hit him up with a dumb D U M D U M B. That was brilliant. I love Gallagher. I stand by him. I hung out with him. Really? We kissed. Oh, I spent a weekend with that guy. Wait, have we heard about this? I hung out with him a bunch. It was a whole situation. What? Somebody, this is at the Boston Comedy Festival. I told you this story. It's the craziest story ever. Wait, okay. He man. wanted to do a documentary. He did. This is the Boston Comedy Festival back in like 1985 or yeah. something. It was my ninth year in. And uh, he was he wanted to do a documentary about him tutelage. Tutelage? Tutelage? Is there a verb for tutelage? Tutling? Tutelaging. Tutoring? It's tutor and tutelage. That must be the same. That's the root word. Ah. A tutor, but you don't... Do you tutor somebody? You tutel. You tutor somebody, you give them tutelage. <laughs> what, I mean, what is tutelage? Is that teachings? That's what I'm trying to figure out. What's tutelage, shellfish? It's like you're on a different show. Tutelage is the tutor. That's no. the noun of tutoring. So he's a tutelage? You tutor somebody, and what you acquire from the tutor is tutelage. This is too much. I think you could tear the tutelage in your knee. Yes. Uh, tutelage <coughs> is like the authority or protection over someone, but you can, it's like giving instruction, so you're, you're right. I think, yeah, yeah, the tutelage. So like a king tutels? I can't get tutel. I can tutel. I can tutel you. Oh, I can okay. say, hey, Mark, you, you, you put the bomb in the basket. Right. Or it gets the hose again. Uh, toodles. <laughs> I don't know where we are anymore. But anyways, Gallagher wanted to do a movie, a documentary, where he toodles the young comics. Oh, fun. And so I was talking. We're sitting in a booth at the old <laughs> Remington's restaurant, the I Comedy think, Vault. I think Louie did that. Yeah, he toodled me. And uh, he asked permission first. Yeah, he always does. I said yes, and then he toodled all over his stomach. Mm-hmm. But uh, great guy, good father. Hell of a comic. Uh, the best one. Maybe. And uh, very thoughtful. Donated 200 grand to the LGBTQ. Sweet, brilliant man. Did more for women than anyone else. <laughs> Anywho, so anyways, we're sitting at the booth at Remington's, and it's, it's Gallagher and some filmmaker and me, and I'm nervous, and I'm young, wow. and I'm wearing acid wash jeans and a headband. <laughs> <laughs> he says, a big, you got a Walkman? <laughs> and he says, uh, all right, so tell me, but I'd also heard he's a bit of a thief. Oh. And I was like 19. I'm very protective of my bits, of sure. course. Sure. And so uh, they're like, he's like, tell me about your ass. I want to tootle. Yeah, maybe you could be a good character for the film. And in my mind, I'm like, I might be in a movie with Gallagher. Sure. But also my other half brain is like, there's no way that I'm going to be a movie. This is stupid. Yeah. This guy's going to tootle me. He's a fucking. Right. He's smashing watermelons. This guy's a too old. <laughs> yeah, he is. So he's asking me. He says, tell me some of your jokes. But I didn't want to tell him my jokes. Yeah. I, I thought he's a thief. So I was like, he's trying to trick me. I was very savvy as a teen. 
So I said, well, I do a lot of self-deprecating and, uh, you know, my father's gay. And I just kind of, you know, whittle the tail. Yeah, he's whittle. And he said, all whittle, right. So you're a, doodle. He's like, you're a nerd. You're a big nerd. Meanwhile, <laughs> he's bald with a scaly cap and a mustache. And he's smashing mess. fruit for a living. <laughs> He's got a mallet on him. He's telling me I'm a nerd. Yeah. I'm like, I'm cool, baby. Right. You're a drunk with a leather jacket. <laughs> I got a leather jacket. <laughs> I got a flask in the jacket. Yes. I fucked a fat chick earlier that day. I mean, I'm pretty yeah, hip. Yeah, pretty hip. <laughs> this guy's got a sledge from 1978. Right. He got a duvetine in the front row. <laughs> I'm like, you're calling me a nerd? You rollerbladed <laughs> into your special. Roller skate. Rollerblade would be too cool. <laughs> <laughs> You're on roller skates, you fucking loser. Yeah, you wear a black vest and a t-shirt. <laughs> Anyways. So I say, he says, You're a nerd. Woo. And he goes, Boy, I can't help but notice you're a tall drink of water. And I go, Well, thank you for noticing. I appreciate it. He goes, You're long, you're skinny. And he looks and he's really thinking. He's rubbing his chin a little bit. Uh oh. And he goes, I'm thinking basketball. Mm. And I go, what? And he goes, you bring a basketball. This is an honest to God truth, word for word. You bring a basketball on stage with you. Uh-huh. And now I got to try to keep a straight face. Prop comedy. Why this old, you know, fucking yuppie is telling me I got to bring a basketball on stage. And I go, yeah. well, I don't really do that. I do kind of a setup punch. He's like, you do the setup punch, but you have a basketball with you. You carry it under your arm. Whoa. Then on a big punchline, you dunk it. Whoa! And I'm like, I gotta get a hoop. I gotta yes. bring a hoop out there too. I got a ball and a hoop. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta drag a hoop behind me, set it up, carry a ball. That's a lot. Meanwhile, I'm like, I'm working at the Comedy Connection. It's right. A, it's a club. I can't just bring a hoop out there. Yeah, yeah. What are you gonna set up a big rider? What do you call that thing? Rydell? That's a high school. Uh. <laughs> We go together like skibbity scoppity bop. Spalding. But he's he's dead serious. He's like, you gotta bring a ball and dunk it in the hoop. Wow. Jump up and stuff it in the basket, Chief. Holy and I go, Well maybe, shit. yeah. And I'm sitting there and the director's like writing this down. He's like, This could be a good motion picture where Gallagher tells this fucking, you know, nerd. You got cameras on you? No, no oh, cameras okay. yet, but we're 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 you know, canoodling. You're brainstorming. We're brainstorming. Yes, holy hell, you're canoodling with a toodling. <laughs> It's a toodle canoodle. You got that right. And uh, I never went through with it. I never brought a basketball on stage because it's, you know, retarded. Wow. But uh, that was his plan. I mean, how could you sit? I mean, he's such a lunatic. I, I, I would feel very unsafe around him because he's like a cat where he could just go off on you. Yeah, it was a little unnerving. Uh, some, this guy, Greg Rodriguez, who's a really funny comic back in the day, a gay Latino. He should have stuck around a little longer. He oh, could have really blown up. be huge. Gay but, Rodriguez. Uh, he had some great, great jokes, Greg Rodriguez. But he had a funny line about it. And he's like, at the beginning of the festival, everyone was like, oh, my God, it's Gallagher. And at the end of the festival, everyone was like, oh, my God, it's Gallagher. Oh, it was really funny. Great. Love that. But he had some great jokes, Greg Rodriguez. But I think he, you know, shuffled off into the night. Uh-huh. But anyway, I don't even know how we got to Gallagher, but that was my Gallagher story. That, I, I don't know. if I've, I've never heard the basketball thing. It was pretty fucking crazy. I'm glad we pulled that out. That's a beauty. Yeah, that was something else. Man, Gallagher. What, you ever heard his Marin? No, I never they, listened. They're in Gallagher's hotel room. They, he, he flips out on Marin. Marin calls him a racist, and he like he's like, get the fuck out of here. I'm going to kill you. Ah, it's oh, crazy. Wow. It's a great listen. Well, you know, he might be. I mean, he's from the 60s or whatever, but you think that was like the taking it to the streets. Yeah. I think in the 60s, you were either racist or you were like, fuck racism. Yeah, you were uh, either or. Nobody was in the middle. I guess that's still true now. But... Nah, there's people in the middle. Uh, <clears throat> well, uh, so... That was the radio. I, I I pissed off the easy listening lady, and uh, I remember I had my opener. There's a there's a restaurant there called Black and Blue, and it's next to the club. It's like a steakhouse, and oh. I was like, that'd be a great place to bring your wife if you abuse her. And the lady was like, oh, like she was freaking out. And I was really trying to yuck it up, and I got a bunch of tweets like, you should be ashamed of yourself, young man. You the way you treated. I was like, I didn't know. I thought it was I was just on a mic. Oh God. By the so way, I got zero fun. tweets from my radio. That's the that's a good sign. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, that's true. If no one, if not one person tweeted, it's probably likely that no one's coming to the show. No, no, I got three tweets and they were all negative. So uh, then Friday, hit the gym, went to Planet Fitness. I gotta really buy a membership because I take an Uber there. That's eight dollars. Uh -huh. The Planet Fitness day pass is twenty bones. Then you take an Uber home, and that's eight dollars. Yep. So I'm in for what? What is that? Forty two dollars. That's uh. Thirty eight. Thirty two. Thirty two. I can't do math. Well, the tip brings it up to thirty three. Tutelage. 
So, uh, yeah, but how about this? I'm in the, uh, the Planet Fist. I'm hungover. I hate myself. So I work out out of guilt to mm-hmm. push it out, you know? And I'm, I'm, uh, like a dump. Yeah. And I'm, I'm hitting about 185 on the bench these days. I've really been building up. That's more than I weigh. You can bench really? press me. I'll bet you. That'd be a good YouTube, Patreon. Let's do it right <clears> after this. Stick your thumb in my ass and your other one on my nipple and I'll we'll get bench one it. The, one in the mouth, one in the ass. I don't know which one's smaller. One in the, one in the small, one in the tiny. Yeah. One in the pink, one in the dink. Dink. Why right. do I dink? So uh, I get I'm on this weight bench machine, and I, I put the little you know little weight plug in, whatever you call the it. clinker, the clinky, and I'm just going, ah, and I can't get it up. Oh boy, been there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a weird thing to yell. But yeah, I couldn't get it, couldn't get it moving. I was like, man, I'm weak. I'm so hungover. It must be something. And I just go, all right, let me wait like a minute and try again. Yeah, I just couldn't move it. And I go, what the fuck is wrong with me? I do this twice a week I work out. Why can't I get this going? I try it one more time. And I like, pulled my shoulder out like, ah, fuck, I couldn't get it going. Oh, hey, I looked down. I had it on 288. Oh, 288. That's the station that woman's on. That's right. 288, Rock 104, Christian. So uh, I don't know what the point of the story is, but I pulled it out, put it back in a 185, and put it right up. I think the point was how much you can bench. That's what it seems like. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I don't know. Is that a high amount? Who knows anymore? I don't know. It's more than I... <clears throat> I got to get rid of this gold. What are you benching, kid? That was a lot of high school. How much you bench? Wasn't yeah. that a thing? What's that from? How much you bench? How Isn't that something? Bench? Wasn't that like a big thing? Was that SNL or something like that? Oh, but it was it Hans and Franz? Maybe. Pump you up. Shelby, Google how much... Yeah, bench. Wasn't that like two a holes sketch on SNL? Maybe two a holes. I don't know that. No, sounds like us. I remember everyone saying how much you bench, and it was like part of the the dialogue, but I didn't know what it was. I, it's just a common uh, equoquialism. How much you bench? I how thought it was like a bench? thing from a from a thing. Check it out. Give it a Google if you get time. Give it a Goog. Get time and no time rush. to wait for to marry. So now it's Friday. Time for our second corporate gig. Uh, one, two corporates. Yeah, so I'm I'm raking in the You're wads. cleaning up, plus yeah. the chickpea. Not a bad lunch and also a good spread. So I go in there. It's an optometry clinic. Ooh. You know, they do LASIK. They cut your eyeball open. It's pretty fascinating shit. Yeah, yeah. This isn't lens crafters, folks. This is the real deal. Oh, this is suck my dicks. They're wearing lab coats. So uh, I go in. It's 35 people. They're all, it's like a bunch of just yentas, a bunch of gaggling gals, you know, uh-huh. overweight, like older women in their 50s. And uh, they all have health care. They got a good gig. They love each other. And the guy's going up and he's like, the guy, uh, this guy, Mark, he goes up with a Santa hat on. They all have reindeer uh, antlers on. It's oh, all very cutesy. I hate the antlers. So he goes up and he goes, Barbara this year sold blah, blah, blah. Woo! Ooh, Rachel this year did very well. Sales are way up. And there's one guy, Alop. He's the one. Alop. <laughs> he's the one Indian guy there. Oh he's wow. Just quiet and meek. And he's like, Alop <laughs> sold. Nah. And everybody's like, Ah, Alop. They all like shake Alop. And he's like, Don't touch me. You know. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Oh, well, he sold a lop. What do you got? You're actually right. There's like a '90s SNL sketch called "How Much You Bench." Wow! Yes. Oh. They all have like comically tiny legs and big upper bodies. Yeah, yeah, that How was a thing. That? I remember that. How much you bench? I never came across that in my life. Who but it was different it? than Hans and Franz. Yeah, it was. I think it was a one-off. Like Emilio Estevez is like you know the host guy uh-huh. and the whole rotating cast around him or whatever. You know what it was? Maybe the Emilio Estevez, he hosted with Pearl Jam, so that might have been why I knew it. Boy, that was buried deep in the sub. Because there was like a, it was like the big episode. It was like Pearl Jam was on SNL, so it was like a whole thing. Uh-huh. So, uh... Anyways, back to gig. a lop. It's getting fussled. Yeah, and uh, so Chris Allen is the host, so he goes up and he's like, this is a small crowd. These people want to be talked to. They don't want to be, you know, jokes. Yeah. So he goes up, crowd works them, they they get a little weird on him. Uh-huh. Then the, then Paul Spratt goes up. He's the middle. Really? They get a little weird on him. So I just go up and I go. I'm just gonna tell jokes. And I just went up and told jokes, and it worked. And then after a while, I I kind of like bled into a little bit of like, what's up with LASIK? Do you have LASIK? Because a lot of people had glasses. So I was right. like, why you work there? Why don't you have LASIK? And they were like, I'm not doing that shit. I'm like, oh, so wow. you would do LASIK on strangers, but you won't. Get LASIK, and it got pretty fascinating. We wow, got somewhere. Wow, interesting. They won't do LASIK. It's terrifying to me. Yeah, but they're LASIK people. I know. It's that's what that's, that's scary. It's very strange. You know, they also cut the eye. Yeah, they cut it. <clears throat> I mean, that's. I mean, I do a joke about it. It's like that seems like 
I've talked about this before, or I do it on stage, but it's like it, it seems like the third best option. If you just came from another planet and you were like, we can put rest glasses comfortably on your face, or you can put a piece of plastic in your eye, or we can cut the front of your eye off. But it works. I feel like you'd be like, I'll take the first one, obviously. Sure, but I mean, look at Cantor. He sees like a, a hawk. Nate Bargatze, too. Oh, he got it? He got it, yeah. He got it years ago. Just find it fascinating that they won't even do it to themselves, and they, they don't practice what they preach. Well, also, I mean, I say this as well, but Doodle. at some point, if you just wait long enough, they'll be like a, a suppository. You think? Like in the future, it'll just everything gets, you know, everything progresses. Yeah. Like DVDs were like, this is the best ever. And now they're obsolete. No, it's up. Ten years from now, you'll just, you know, you'll snort a fucking powder and then you'll be able to see forever. When's the hair loss coming out? You know, that's got to pop soon. That's on its way, I think. I don't know. We've been saying that for 40 years. But isn't there some things you can do? Well, there's uh, Propiche and there's Rogue. But uh, nothing, I mean, people are still going bald, so it ain't, you know, it ain't working all the way. Uh, I don't know. I don't know anything about that. Yeah, you got a nice thick mane. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, it's luscious. How much you bench? I want to put my uh, fingers through it. But yeah, so fun time with the. And I tell you, those uh, I'm going to get a little geeky comedy here, but those corporates they're, they're kind of good for you. They they shake you up a bit. They get you out of your comfort zone. You got to mm-hmm. just be funny in the moment. You can't just rely on your act. You got to be shucking and jiving. So they were fun. And uh, all the reindeer hats, nice people. It's amazing. These people just have regular jobs all day, every day. And that's it. Yep. That's their big event, going yeah. to see you. I know. You're like, so, I got this side gig. It's nice. It's the afternoon. It gives me something to do. I'll make a few bucks. For them, it's like, this is a big thing. We're going to see this TV guy. Exactly. <coughs> so we go out in Albany. We get drunk. Albany, not a bad city. There's some shit to do. We go down to Lark Street. That's like the hipster, cool, gay area. Oh, no kidding. We hit it up. We got pretty sloppy. And then I love these Hampton Inns. It's free hotel Wi-Fi, free breakfast, free cookies all day. The cheaper the hotel, the more free stuff you get. It's it's like a fat chick. You get more out of them. You go on a big tour. You go to the Waldorf Astoria. That laundry costs eight million dollars. Yes! The Wi-Fi. food's fifty bucks. Wi-Fi they charge you. It's crazy. You eat a mint, they rape you in the anal. Yeah, but they these do. cheap hotel, all you need that is I the like. bed. Yeah. So I love a cheap hotel, or at least the middle of the road. So then after that. I'm hungover on Sunday. We go see. Let's go. We're like, ah, fuck it. We've done corporates every day. Let's take it easy. Go to Chipotle and see a movie. We go, great. We go to the mall. We go see Disaster Artist. Yeah, any good? Uh, it's a fun watch. It's not a great film, but it you got to respect what the guys did. They go, hey, we love this fucked up movie, The Room. Let's make a movie about that movie being made. They're just doing what they want. Movie about a movie. That's why Seth Rogen and Franco are cool. It's like, hey, we're going to go do this. If you want to watch it, great. If you don't, great. And the reviews are in. I mean, it's like a 98% or on right? Rotten to May. Yeah. Oh, I didn't think it was that good. It's oh. a little cheesy. You know, well, it's, it's a lot of like, we got to follow our dreams, man. A lot of that shit. And uh, a lot of uh, Carmichael's in it, Hannibal's in it, Joe Mandy's in it, oh, uh, wow. John Early. All these comedians are all over it. No kidding. Yeah. Well, that I was like kind of fun. Like, oh, there's one. Oh, there's one. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'd like to be in a movie. Oh, that'd be fun, huh? It seems like fun. Yeah, and it's a good paycheck and just a easy... Being on a set is so fun. It's so exciting. They come yeah. and they knock on your door and then they hold a little fan to your face. Yes. It feels fun. You're making a thing. It's silly and fun and I weird. Know. I love it. And you're like, this is work? They're putting makeup on you. It's it's a good time. I like putting makeup on. I do it at home. A little eyeliner and sure. blush. And then uh, I jerk off and I pretend I'm watching a different person jerk off and then I eat it. It's so funny. I did that with fingernail polish. Oh, I remember yeah, that's a legendary. All right, so uh, we saw Disaster Artist, and I, the heck, I don't. You, you've been sober what? Four years now? Five, five, five years. Boy, you're half a deck. Five, yeah, half a decade. That's pretty. Impressive. I've now known you longer sober than when I was drinking. No, isn't that crazy? Or well, we've been friends. Yeah, look at that. We became friends in what? Oh nine. Yeah, that's that? three years and five years. There you go. Well. The hangover anxiety started kicking in, uh-huh. and I was watching the movie, and I had all these roller coasters of like panic attack. Yeah. It was about creative, and it was about this guy who never couldn't make it, and you know he's trying to be in the movie business, and no one likes him. And I, I started like being like, "Who am I? I'm, got, I'm nowhere in my career. What am I doing? I got to get this. I got to get that. Everybody's killing it. I hate myself. I'm gay." And I had, and I was like, oh, thinking about my jokes. Like, you're telling that joke on stage. Who do you think you are to get away with that? That's too offensive. It's too edgy. You suck. 
You shouldn't be telling those jokes. Ah! And I had to like dig myself out of it. Like, no, you're fine. You're good. You're, you're headlining a club. And I'm like, but I'm headlining a funny one in the mall. I'm a, such a hack. What am I doing? Cruise ships next. Ah! So it was a whole thing. Sometimes in movies it is because you get you're in your head. You're watching. If the movie's not great, yes, you're just sitting there in your head, going, yeah. "What am I doing? I should be doing something else." It's exactly. easy to come apart when you're on a movie. Very come <laughs> apartable. And I'm not looking at my phone. I'm not doing anything. You're just sitting there with your thought in a dark room. I'm like that in baseball games too because it's slow. So yeah. there's a lot of time. I'm just like, I hate myself. What totally. That's probably why I drink at baseball games. It's a struggle. Yeah. I got I to gotta get into this major thing that happened to me. Oh, you got this a major? Is, it's a stunning thing. Oh, please. This is a major. I, would, I didn't know. I, would, I was just killing time here with japping about my panic attack. I got a major over here. You got a major. I had a, I had a, a private. A private? What's that? A ranking. Military. Oh, oh, they've been private. I was like, I got some bad news. There's people listening to this. Oh, no. I got a private part. But I was just saying, I, these are all privates. If you got a major, bring out that. I got a major. This is a colonel. Oh, boy, we got a Colonel Sanders. I got a Colonel stuck in my teeth from when I went to the movies. Uh-huh. <clears throat> By the way, I was talking to a guy we know, a comic, that I bumped into on the train. He was like, your, your podcast is huge. What do you got, like a half a million listeners? I'm like, half a million? Oh, my God. Are you crazy? We'd kill for that. Half a million. I'd be famous. That's where it should be. <clears throat> We'd have an ad. I can tell you that. Oh, we could use an ad, Shelfish. Uh, yeah, can we uh, email somebody about that? Yeah, let's get an ad in here. Patreon. Hit up the Patreon. We're making no money over here for these things. No, and, and buy a shirt, for Christ's sake. It's a good Christmas gift. Oh, I got to thank Colleen and Dave in, ah. in Rosemont, by the way. Colleen and Dave, they got a little baby on the way. Ooh. Colleen and Dave, good luck, best of luck, good looking couple. They gave us each a $25 Chipotle gift card. They had a gray Tuesday shirt. They had me sign it. They're going to have you sign it. They're going to put it on the glass, these folks. Wow, where were they in Chicago when I was there? I think they came. Maybe they were too nervous or uh, uh, they sure. weren't pregnant yet or something. Oh, <clears throat> yeah, bring the baby. I'll kiss it. So, yeah, Colleen and Dave, big shout out. Thank you guys. Thanks to all the Tuesdays yes. in Chicago. Chicago's a big. Healthy market back there. Yeah, we got the good cities. And uh, good market, and we need a Joe kit. Uh -huh. <laughs> a Joe kit would come with, uh, you know, herpes and glasses. And a small mouth. A mouth shrinker. Yes, mouth shrinker. Um, uh. But anyways, all right, so this is, a, this is a big, big daddy, a big... This one really it hit me, Papa. It hit my spine and made a... I got a spine quiver. Ooh, a spina bifida. Yes, sir. He's just playing the hand he was dealt. Uh -huh. um, you ever see Shallow Hell? I think it's underrated. Great movie. There's some real laughs Great in there. Movie. It's uh, it would be offensive today. Yeah, well, oh, everything everything they've Everything's ever done would be offensive. Yeah, fucking but, you know, Mickey Mouse is offensive. But it's really uh, hey gang. Uh, oh, that was Mackie. Yeah, <laughs> Mackie Mouse. <laughs> yeah, that's not bad. Uh -huh. Um. So, anyways, I do the MSG show. I'm working for uh, MSG and Sam Morrill. I do the, the post game for Cheapo Air. Madison Square Garden. I do some Q&A with the Knicks and Rangers fans. So I do it, and it's fun. It's invigorating. You're talking to the fans, and you go, ah, hoo hoo ha, ha, and you laugh. You make fun of them. It's all on YouTube. You can watch it. So I leave, and I, I'm going back. This is the night of the Sam Morrill special. Yes. And so I, I do the, the, the MSG, and now i got to run back to go watch. I was there earlier. I was loving it. I felt great. I go to MSG. I feel good. I'm making some money. I'm meeting some people. It's exciting. I'm going back to Sam. So I run down the steps at Penn Station, and I see a big uh, a hoobble hobble, mm. a real thing oh, happening. Oh, this is a major. So this is, I see about six or seven cops and a crowd gathered at the bottom of the stairs. And I'm thinking, oh, boy, we got an incident here oh, you know, in New York boy. City. And there's a bunch of cops at Penn Station. So these are first responders. Mm. So I'm wondering what's going on. Maybe there's a stabbing or something. I walk down the stairs, and there is a dead person Whoa. at the bottom of the steps a body a body jerry wow she's got a great body buddy <laughs> he's down there this guy is in a suit older guy tie suit he's laying there motionless whoa nothing and then there's a woman i assume his wife is sitting indian style native american style at his head whoa. holding his head crying she's like this <laughs> Are they on the floor or the stairs? They're on the floor, on the on the ground at the bottom of the stairs. So I don't know if he fell down the stairs, had a heart attack or what. Oh, my but God. But he's laying there lifeless, and it's just cops. And I guess cops don't have to be trained in CPR or some shit. Oh. No. Because they're just standing there. I mean, they're doing nothing. They're just looking at him. Well, maybe it's too late. It might be too late. So then they're like, back up, everybody back up. And they're not giving him air because he's just dead. I mean, yeah. he's, this guy's dead. I'm looking at I can see his face. Wow. Just fucking frozen. Nothingness. Oh, the woman's... Ah, oh, so And she's sad. holding him crying. It was really stunning. It sent a chill right through my asshole. Clearly the wife. 
you know. I assume it's the wife, I and mean, maybe it's a sister or whatever, but yeah. it's definitely someone that knows because they would have sure. cleared her, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so then I'm like, all right, I gotta, I gotta walk away here because they want space. I don't want to be one of these guys that's, you know, a voyeur or yeah, a paparazzi. Guy. So I said, let me get out of here. Let me have this moment. Let them have the moment. And then I'm walking down another layer of stairs to get to the subway because it's like double layer. And as I'm walking down those stairs, I see two paramedics running with the orange kit. Ah, it's the, like the jolty kit. The defibrillator. Yes, and he yelled, make way! I never oh, heard anyone actually say make way. Wow, look at that. He's like, make way! Lady with a baby! He was running up there, you know? It was like, I've, I've never heard make way actually used. Yes, in a movie, maybe. But he had the thing, and he was like, they were going to go jolt him and try to save him. So wow. maybe, maybe he's back. I don't know. Wow, call in, folks, if you've seen that old guy walking around. Have life... You- Full of life. A guy in a suit with a limp, I assume. Something. Something. <clears throat> but a lot of time must have passed because, like, I mean, I don't know how long he can stay dead for. Maybe yeah. a minute, two minutes. But Maybe. I was, it was the time that I was coming down the stairs, stopped to on look, and then walked. I mean, realistically, it's probably 40 seconds. But yeah. he was already there when it happened. So it must yeah. have been at least a minute of just flatlining. Sounds like a bad ticker. But it was real crazy. And I really, I made sure to not look at my phone or anything for a while. I wanted to really feel it and feel the emotion, the feeling. Pretty wild. But it's crazy to just be, that's that's it. It's life and death. That's it, baby. You're alive. You're shooting a TV show. Hey, what's the Knicks capital of the center? P- ah. uh-huh. And then I'm like, woo, hot dog. I'm sliding down the thing. And yep. There it is. It's hey. death right in front of you. Ooh, that's somebody's dad, husband, uncle, friend. Yeah, think of crazy. all the people he had sex with. I know. Hey, someone fucked a dead guy. Maybe he had AIDS. Have that you fucked anyone that it. died? Have I fucked? Yes. Really? I'll tell you later. Oh, wow. I might know about it. No. Oh, it's just boy. so sad. I want to bring it up, and then uh, the, what if somebody knows the person? Right, right. You might know the guy. Boy, oh, boy. Uh, but, yeah, life and death, folks. So enjoy it out there, everybody. Happy New Year. And uh, it's, boy, what is it, January 2nd here? It's the New Year. Yeah. 2018. Here's to better times. And, uh... Oh, I had a funny joke. I just thought of it. Damn it. Yeah. Would have been good in the moment. Have Too late. Have any dead guy? I could have said Robert Williams. Oh, nah, that would have been, been fun. Been fun. Yeah, something's nah, over. Well, uh, folks, uh, happy 2018. We love you. Thanks for listening. Let's make it a big year. Yeah. Let's a- do some shit, make accomplish things, tell a friend, and uh, come see us. Yeah, we'll be better people, and a uh, lot of gigs coming up, of course. We got Poughkeepsie this Friday night. Yeah, we got that right. <clears throat> uh, That's big. Yeah, laugh it up, folks. And then uh, Madison, Wisconsin, my favorite comedy on state, with Sarah coming up. Denver's in a couple weeks. Yes. With uh, Ari Shafir, Sean Patton, Steve Simone. Come out to that one. That'll be great. I got uh, Ann Arbor Comedy Showcase, my birthday weekend. Come out to that, April 5th, 6th, and 7th. The big 3-6. Yes. Come out to that. We'll both be at Moon Tower. We're going to do a live Tuesdays with Stories at Moon Tower in Austin. We're coming back. Uh, check it out. And uh, I'm at uh, Irvine Improv in uh, Irvine, California. Come on out to that. Then Charlie Goodnights in Raleigh. I've been hearing great things about that room. Dr. Grins in Grand Rapids. Helium in Buffalo. Helium in Philly. A lot of good dates coming up. Charlotte, Comedy Zone with Chris Allen, my old pal with a tight shirt. Laughing Skull in Atlanta. Love Atlanta. Comedy Attic Bloomington. A lot of stuff on the books. So come on out. Get a Chipotle card, say hello, buy a shirt, check the Patreon, new queefs always coming at you, and uh, yeah, have a happy new. Yeah, I love you. Happy, hope you're healthy and not dead, and we love you. Take care of each other out there, folks. Keep it real.